Let's talk about diet then. Sure. What do I need to know in terms of what I'm eating and drinking to make sure that my eye health stays um, optimal? So they've been looking at lifestyle factors on aging eye diseases for, for, gen for, for a long time, many decades. The biggest one thing when it comes to diet and they even have more recent publications. Um, a mentor of mine, uh, Julie Poteet, she's a past president of the Ocular Wellness and Nutrition Society, who I'm, who, which I'm a member of. She even brought my attention to a publication just this year from the American Journal of Nutrition. They looked at the original publication of AREDS, the Age-Related Eye Disease Study. It has large cohort of people, like 4,000 people they watched over nine years tracking their diet, tracking uh, their eye health and how things were changing. And they find that just eating a Mediterranean diet, green leafy vegetables, oily fish, reduces your risk of developing conditions like macular degeneration, specifically slowing down the, pro the progression of that condition. In that specific study, this publication that just came out, they showed that just having 2.7 servings of green leafy vegetables in a week, not a day, but just even a week, Right? We're supposed to have more than, more than that in a day, but just 2.7 servings or more can slow down your risk of progression of that condition, macular degeneration, by 25% from going from early to more of an advanced stage. And macular degeneration leads to blindness. It can, yeah. Especially as we get older. Because that condition, and we can go into it, but that condition has a lot to do with your inflammation, it has to do with um, metabolism and oxidative stress that occur within the eye. But green leafy vegetables, at least 2.7 servings a week, that's that specific study. They find that oily fish, eating two servings of oily fish a week, slowed it down by 21%. And then they found a synergistic effect for people who ate both. It was a 41% reduced risk of progressing in that disease. So, and that's not just the only study. They find that people who eat Diets that have more fruits and vegetables, that have oily fish, reduced risk of developing conditions like macular degeneration, reduced risk of things like diabetic retinopathy. And so I try to focus on eating a good, healthy diet. I mean, the thing that I heard growing up was that you need to eat lots of carrots, mm -hmm. and then carrots will help your vision. So carrots, do you know where that came from? No. That's actually a, it was propaganda started in the UK by uh, Great Britain. Um, from what I understand, I'm sure there's like a historian out there who's just like grumbling at me. But from what I have read and studied is that I believe it was World War II that Britain had was being attacked by the Germans and they were worried about German warplanes dropping bombs on them, especially at nighttime. And they had already established radar to detect warplanes coming, but they didn't want Germany to know that. So they put out their own propaganda saying, hey, our scouts can detect German warplanes better because they eat their carrots. Because carrots have beta carotene, which your body can convert to vitamin A, which is essential for nighttime vision and retinal health. Ah, okay. Because I always, also used to hear that you eat, if you ate carrots, you could see in the dark. Yeah. So it's a, I mean, it is based on some... Like vitamin A is essential for photoreceptors in the back of the eye, but most people are not vitamin A deficient by far. And so it's pretty rare that we see vitamin A deficiency in the, in the eye clinic, unless you uh, happen to live in a place that's pretty malnourished. You mentioned oily fish. I was on your YouTube channel and I saw that you did an experiment where you took omega-3 for 90 days. Uh, I guess because there's some kind of implications for vision with omega-3? Omega-3 does play a role in the eyes for two rays. Uh, that specific video, uh, I was really looking at omega-3s and its relationship to my own dry eye symptoms. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of studies looking at omega-3 and, and its dry eye. And the research is still a bit all over the place. Most, most eye care providers who specialize in dry eye will say that you know there is a role for omega-3s in helping reduce inflammation that contributes to dry eye, because a lot of dry eye disease has to do with inflammation. And so there is a large belief that it does work. There are some publications, of course, that say, no, it doesn't, it's just the same as placebo. And so there's still some debate. But omega-3s also play a huge role in the retina in the back of the eye. The photoreceptors 
in the back of the eye within the retina, this, again, this kind of orange pink tissue in the back, mm -hmm. that picks up all the light that you see, the colors that you see, it sends those signals through the optic nerve to the brain. So the retina is essential. So the photoreceptors, about 50 to 60% of the fatty acid content of the photoreceptor is DHA omega-3. Hmm. And so there have been, interestingly enough, research showing that diets that have more oily fish, those people are less likely to develop macular degeneration and they're less likely to have problems with diabetic retinopathy if they happen to be diabetic. But then a lot of the publications on using omega-3s supplements have not seen the same results in terms of this form of retinal health. And there is some insight. They're thinking they've kind of figured this out. And this is still very early research, but so there is a transporter called the MFSD2A. This transporter helps transport specific forms of DHA omega-3 through the blood-brain barrier into neural tissue. And they're finding that that same transporter works for the blood retinal barrier as well. And so newer studies looking mainly at Alzheimer's disease, but they're doing it on mice and they're formulating a specific type of DHA called ly lysophospholipid DHA that binds to that transporter and helps that get into neural tissue. And the current research is showing that with mice, at least, uh, I haven't found anything in humans, but at least with mice, that the retinal health is improving. They're having better signals through the retina, as well as less risk of things like retinopathy. So, so still very early research, but... So the omega-3 that I've got in my cupboard at home is probably not going to help, but the the new versions of omega-3 that they're working on probably will. Might. And the reason why the current omega-3s don't seem to have that effect on the retina is because omega-3 fish oils are in the form of what is called a triacylglycerol, which your body can convert in the liver to get to neural tissue, but it's not very efficient. Okay. There are some forms of... So if you are eating fish, fish krill and then like fish eggs. Do you like sushi? Yeah. So fish eggs are often on sushi, um, fish roe. Those types of, like salmon, I've read it has like up to one to 1 1.7% of these phospholipid type of DHA, so not very much. But krill can be up to about 30%. Fish eggs can be somewhere between 35 up to like 70% of these phospholipid DHAs. And your body is able to either turn those into triacylglycerol, which is similar to the omega-3 fatty acid supplements, or it can turn that into this lysophospholipid DHA, which your body can transport into neural tissue at a, at a better bioavailability. What did you discover when you started taking omega-3 for 90 days as part of that experiment? Mm -hmm. So that was, again, looking more at dry eye. Yeah. And specifically, I took, first I just looked at, hey, what's my blood level of omega-3s right now? Mm -hmm just by diet, and it was pretty low at that time. It was like 4.7 or something like that, which you want between 8 and 12%. Then I started taking, I also did measurements of my dry eye symptoms. Uh, my dry eye symptoms, I took dry eye measurements that we do in the clinic to diagnose objectively what's going on with the dry eye, the dryness components. And then I took it for 90 days, and then I also tested my my blood again at the end. And I found that after taking those omega-3s, that specific formula, that it ended up getting to about 9.5% omega-3. It's like a hundred, more than 100% increase. So it was a dramatic increase in the omega-3 in my blood. And my dry eye symptoms also improved. Now, again, that's just an N of one. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm just course, one yeah. person. Uh, there's a lot of, dry eye is really complicated too. What is dry eye? I don't think I've ever had dry eye. So dry eye disease is, a disease of the eye. I think everybody can have symptoms of dry eye, just if you walk outside, you know, it's a windy day, maybe you're sitting around a bonfire or something, smoke hits your eye, your eyes can feel a little dry, you blink a few times. But dry eye disease enters a whole different state. And dry eye disease occurs when not only is there, a, there could be a reduced amount of production of tears, it could be that your tears evaporate too quickly. That's a lot of people. 
And then what happens is that there's a little bit of damage on the surface of the eye because the, the tear film has to stay stable to protect the tissue underneath. If the tears are gone, the tissue underneath gets exposed to air and salt content of your tears ends up going up, what we call hyperosmolarity of the tears. That higher salt content irritates the surface of the cells and the surface of the eye here on the cornea. It then has little micro damage, which your body tries to heal. Inflammatory proteins come out to try and heal that. Now, again, if it's just a small episode, you're walking on the street, wind comes up dry, your body heals it. But if it's a chronic condition, you're dealing with dryness all day long, every day, for weeks, months, the inflammatory proteins never go away. And the inflammatory proteins start signaling your lacrimal gland to stop producing as much tears. The inflammation prevents your eye from healing. And then the inflammation can cause the oil glands of the eyelids to start to basically cause more irritation and stop producing as well. Is there one food in particular that is, in your view, the top food for good eye health? So green leafy vegetables. What about sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes can certainly have help, help you with things like vitamin A. They've got other nutrients in them I think are really good. Uh, sweet potatoes technically have beta carotene, right? Same thing as carrots. If you're deficient in vitamin A, your body will convert that beta carotene to vitamin A, which is good. But uh, mainly in green leafy vegetables, you can not only get things like beta carotene, but you can get lutein and zeaxanthin, which uh, are amazing for eye health in many ways. Not just eye health, but also brain health. What about sugar? What impact does it, because you, you mentioned diabetes earlier, mm -hmm. I think. If I'm having a lot of sugar in my diet, will that have an impact on my eye health? It can. For patients who don't, or for people who are diabetic or have elevated blood sugars, when you have too much sugar in your blood, it can enter into the eye, it can cause the, the lens inside the eye to swell. And so with that swelling, you can see a refractive change. Your power of your glasses, contact lenses, that can shift. And so that can sometimes be a tip-off if you were to see me in the clinic and I notice your prescription suddenly changed like two steps. I'm like, why is it making this big of a change? It may be a tip-off that, hey, maybe the blood sugar's off, we have to send you in for like a diabetic workup. Do people with diabetes suffer more with their vision? They can. Uh, diabetes is... It is devastating for the, the health of the eye because with diabetes, when your blood sugar is elevated, it causes damage to the endothelium of the blood vessels and the arteries in the back of the eye. The things at the back of those things there. Yeah, because the, the back of the eye is one of the most highly vascularized area of your body. Because so we can, because you have blood vessels again on the inside of the retina, you have blood vessels on the back side of the retina. And so when people have damage to those blood vessels, the blood the vessels can start to hemorrhage. They can start to have little aneurysms. They start to bleed in the back of the eye. And then the function of the retinal tissue, because the retinal tissue is not getting the nutrients, the oxygen and the nutrients it needs to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And so then people's vision can deteriorate. You can have a swelling in the back of the eye in the retinal tissue itself. We call macular edema. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, if people unfortunately are diabetic, they don't know it, or they're poorly controlled. They can bleed so much in the back of the eye that fibrous scar tissue starts to form and it can even pull on the retina and create a retinal detachment. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.